Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nick Tan Chats, my magic and mentalism review show. Uh, my name is Nick Tan and on today's program, we'll be looking at Dreamweaver as well as Lexicology 2.0, two items from Paul Canazzo. All right, so once again, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Nick Tan Chats. Uh, for those of you who are already subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. If you have yet to subscribe and you like the content that I put out, uh, the magic and mentalism reviews that I do every now and then, please subscribe. Your subscription and your support will actually motivate me to uh, churn out some more content whenever I can. Also, do hit the bell notification button as well so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new episode of Nick Tan Chats on YouTube. Before today's episode you know, really begins, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how this episode came about. See, some time back, just recently actually, I placed an order uh, with Paul Canazzo for a set of his travel ESP cards. I got a set of his travel ESP cards a long, long time ago. I got you know, use out of them every now and then whenever I'm you know, doing the impromptu performance. Until now, they've started to show some signs of wear and tear and I decided, you know what, it's time to get a new set. But when I got the set, uh, to my surprise, uh, Paul actually offered to send me other stuff as well, all right, to actually review and talk about uh, on this show. So before anything else, a big thank you to Paul Canazzo uh, for his generosity in sending me all this material for me to talk about. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, Dreamweaver. Okay, now Dreamweaver isn't a new product, okay, when I, I did a bit of research and I think it was released back in 2012. So the effect of Dreamweaver is as follows. Uh, a spectator is handed one of these cards, okay? Uh, on this card, it's a two-sided card, all right? And on both sides are written common dreams that people dream about, okay? In fact, I'll read out a couple of them. Uh, there's like money, teeth, uh, hair, flying, you know, falling, all right? Common, you know, themes for, for dreams. And then you take the spectator through a, a bit of a visualization process, and after that, you will be able to nail the exact dream that they are merely thinking of. Okay, it's as clean as that, nothing written down, no pumping, no fishing, nothing. You'll be able to tell them the exact dream after that short visualization process. Uh, this is what the card looks like. It looks very nice, it's made of uh, plastic material, uh, it's about the size of a credit card, this will fit inside your wallet uh, perfectly for those moments when you need to do anything related to dreams, okay? So if you're out and about uh, and if the conversation, you know, in your group of friends or anything steers towards like dreams or, or recurring dreams and things like that, you can steer the conversation towards this kind of a thing that you've been studying, you know, this metaphysical dreams and stuff, you know, what they mean and stuff like that. And then you can pull this one out and perform a reading for them. Method-wise, it is not new, okay? The method is not new. In fact, I've used such methods before uh, in other things. Uh, and I'm sure many magicians will be familiar with the methodology involved. Uh, in fact, I think some lay people will be, you know, familiar with this kind of method as well. However, uh, I think the way, the way it is applied to this card uh, is very clever. I mean, at least for me, I, I've not seen the way, you know, this kind of application before, the way it's applied. Uh, it's very clever and I think uh, if you perform it for some magicians, you, they are probably going to be hard-pressed as to exactly how you, you know, got the information as well. So if magicians don't stand a chance, I don't think lay people are going to stand a chance with this. Okay? It's, it, the method is very well disguised within this card. In the Dreamweaver package, you will get a link as well uh, to a PDF. And on the PDF, Paul uh, Paul writes very clearly. Okay, so everything is described in there. Uh, how to perform the card, presentational ideas are given there. Also, uh, a reading for every single one of these dreams is is given there. The meaning behind each and every dream as well. So once you get the dream, you know the dream. Okay, you are able to embellish it with some kind of a reading before you uh, reveal to them that you know the dream, right? For, so for example, if, if you were to, uh, I don't know, if you know that a spectator is dreaming of flying, okay, uh, the worst way to do it would, would be, you know, uh, think of your dream, you're dreaming of flying. Yes, yes, thank you. And, and that's so that's the worst way of doing it, right? So because you already know that it's flying, what you should do with this card, it enables you to, to play a little bit, right? So before you review flying, you can actually talk about what it means, how you feel in the dream, uh, and you know, other aspects of it, take certain guesses. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're wrong, you know, because at the end of it all, you have the dream to fall back on if all else fails. I think between knowing the information and revealing the information, this period 
is where mentalism lives. Okay, so this is where, because it's, it's got such a clean method for you to get the dream, you can play in between and just milk the revelation for all it's worth before telling them the exact dream. All right, there's gonna be some memory work involved in this, okay? Um, but it's not too difficult. I mean, uh, for me personally, I'm used to this kind of methodology. So um, it came quite naturally to me. Uh, I didn't spend that much time and I already, have, I already have the information in my head. So I can perform this straight out with just the card alone. If you don't wish to perform with memory, you can create a crib sheet of sorts. Uh, and I mean, the, the timing for, for getting your peak at your crib is, is is great, right? Because uh, after you've got information, you have to remember something. And then as you put the card back into your wallet, that's where the crib can be hiding. Uh, and then you can get the information when you put the card back into your wallet. So all in all, I think I, I really enjoyed Dreamweaver. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pocket you know, pocket mentalism card which will fit nicely into your wallet. Great to carry around for those moments when you can do some impromptu on the spot mentalism. It's very clever, the method is very very well disguised in this uh, and I think I'm gonna have a blast trying this out. Alright, and next up I'm gonna talk about uh, Lexicology 2.0. Now Lexicology is something, again it's not new, it was first released in like 20, 2010 I believe. Alright, and I got it back then. I actually bought the you know lexicology when it first came out back then and the thing is i bought it uh when i got it uh the strange thing is i did not bother with it all right uh thinking back now it is because i was entirely i was totally not ready yet in my development as a mentalist i was not ready for using that kind of this kind of a method uh and um this kind of a performance piece at that point in time uh, my you know, skill levels in uh, performing it um, with this kind of method, I wasn't ready at that point in time, all right? So it was 20, 2010, I got the thing. Um, I kept it aside. In 2015, Kennedy, Luch, and Atlas Brookings uh, had a, a podcast, all right, which they call uh, Three Mentalists Walked Into a Podcast, I believe. And on that episode, I think episode number four, uh, in August of 2015, I think. Uh, Atlas Brookings actually talks about lexicology and how, how great it is and how much he loved it. So that actually spurred me to bring it out again from storage and try it out. And I was surprised at the kind of reactions it got. I mean, it was such a simple thing to me, um, but I guess just how direct it is, kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's strength basically. So let me tell you a little bit more about lexicology. So with lexicology, you will get the card, okay? The lexicology card is a double-sided card with words on both sides. So the effect is as follows. I mean, there are 21 words on one side. I'm not gonna show you the words here because the words, the nature of the words is, is kind of part of the method, okay? So there are 20, I'll tell you that there are 21 words on this side over here. So you perform this for, you can perform this for one spectator, two spectators, three or even four spectators, okay? Which is how I used to do it when I was doing uh, mingling, uh, you know, kind of performances. So the first spectator is you ask them to think of an odd number from one to 21. The second spectator thinks of an even number from one to 21. They both look at the list over here and they memorize the word that falls at their list. Uh, and then the second spectator, uh, he's asked to take it a step further by looking at the other side of the card and he's asked to associate whatever word he's thinking of with a word that is on this side over here. Okay, so he's got a new word in mind at this point in time. After that, you can look at a third and fourth spectator and use this other side with word list number two, okay? You ask one again to think of an even number, an odd number, they each think of a word from here, and the card is out of play at this point in time. So you've got four people thinking of four different words, and now, you can immediately nail the first person's word. The second spectator as well, very cleanly, you can nail the word, okay? Tell them exactly what word you're thinking of. The same goes for the third and the fourth spectator as well. Very clean, uh, direct reveals of four thought of words. Now, I liked the effect so much. After trying it out with the original card after a while, uh, back in 2015, about a, after, I don't know, a couple of months later, I actually designed my own. Okay, now I made it into a, a black kind of a, a design. Okay, I changed some of the words as well because uh, I think some of the wordings actually suit me a little bit better. But the, the, the concept behind the card, uh, the method behind the card is entirely Paul's. Okay, but this uh, phrasing kind of suited me more and uh, it suited the, 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 the demographic here in Singapore a little bit better. So I love having this in my wallet because 
very early in the in the close-up set, you know, uh, normally I you know you interrupt a group of people, and I can immediately tell four people, you know, I tell you think of this, you think of this, uh, look at this, look at this, and four of the, four people immediately are engaged. All right, with nothing written down, there's nothing to be handed out, there's nothing to be chosen or anything like that. They just think of things and very quickly you nail all four thoughts and that's how I used to almost start my close-up set. And so because the reveals are so clean and you are already seen to be able to reveal words without them being written down, then following that, after that you can go into more detailed kind of reveals, right? Where they start, you know, they write pieces of information down and they fold it up or something like that. So I think that the lexicology method kind of strengthens the, the subsequent phases that I do in my close-up set, right? Because I'm already seen to be able to review words that are only thought of and not written down. So the writing down after that is kind of strengthened in a way. I mean, if he, if he could do it without the words being written down, nothing's to stop him from, from that subsequent part as well. You know, I, I hope you know what I mean. Right, what I love about lexicology also is that it uses multiple methods, okay? So not all methods are the same. Uh, there's some memory work involved in using this card smoothly, okay? So you do need to be refreshing it every now and then in your head, especially um, the third and fourth phases, which if it works well, I think it's just, there's no way to explain it, okay? So uh, some, there's some memory work involved in the scripting. It's quite a heavy, it's script dependent kind of an effect, okay? But nothing too difficult. I'm sure you can get it down uh, with just a bit of practice. Only one negative I can say about this card in my experience of using it is after you get the, the words uh, thought of, the card has to go away, okay? You cannot leave the card uh, for spectators to look at for too long. I think they will start to kind of suss out how how bits of it are, are, are done. Uh, right at the beginning of the routine, I, I, I can actually hand the card out and they can just briefly look at it. There are some subtleties to kind of reinforce that all the words are different. And they are, they, all the words are different, okay? Um, yeah, that's all I can say about that. The words are different. Um, some subtleties to push that fact through at the start. But once the, the words are selected by the four people, then this card has to go away. I wouldn't leave this card with them uh, for any amount of time. And in my experience of doing this as close, you know, as, a, as an opening effect almost sometimes, after you reveal the four words, you immediately move on to something else immediately so that, you know, they don't get a chance to <laughs> think too much and say, you know, hey, I want to have a look at that card again. Please take it out. It, yeah, it, it should just go away. All right, so all in all, I, I really like Lexicology 2.0. Uh, I think you will enjoy it too, okay? If this is kind of a trick that, if you like the effect, you know, if you read, read about the effect, if you like the effect, I think this is something that you will enjoy as well. Uh, you'll be surprised by the reactions. I was surprised by the reactions. Uh, and I think, again, I think it's because of how direct the, the mind reading happens. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Paul Canazo uh, for sending me this stuff. Uh, there are, he's got, I have some more stuff from, from him, okay? But I cannot, I cannot squeeze everything into one episode. I'll probably will do a future episode about uh, maybe, you know, a couple more of his products. I will leave a link in the description box down below so that you too can go and uh, have a look and pick up a set of uh, Dreamweaver and Lexicology for yourselves. Alright, so till next time, thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, take care and I'll see you again in future episodes.